What if I told you that John Jones will get his butt whooped by Cyril Gunn at UFC 285? You must be thinking that I'm out of my mind for betting against arguably the greatest fighter of all time. This shit means so much to me. This is my life, dude. This isn't like just some... I'm gonna get him. But I have my reasons to believe that Jones bit off more than he can chew by agreeing to fight Bonga Men, aka the good kid. And I'm going to explain them in this video. So let's kick things off without any further ado. John Jones is a phenomenal fighter. He's not an easily likable character, like a George St. Pierre or an Anderson Silva, but his super villain persona is exactly what sets him apart from his peers. He's the MMA equivalent of Thanos, who has mercilessly vanquished UFC superheroes like Lyoto Machida, Mauricio Shogun Hua, Quentin Jackson, Alexander Gustafsson, and Daniel Cormier. Jones is a monster among men. He's arguably the most talented fighter there's ever been, with a fight IQ that is through the roof. With everything that he's achieved in his career, the former two-time light heavyweight champion has nothing left to prove. Yet, he is hungry for more and wants to get his hands on the UFC Heavyweight Championship. Goals to be uh, the most technical, the most uh, well conditioned, the strongest uh, out of all the heavyweights. Standing in his way is Cyril Gaon, who is not an easy fight by any means. The Frenchman is more than ready to not only ruin his foe's heavyweight debut, but also hand him his first legitimate career loss. Let's take a closer look at the reasons why John Jones will leave Las Vegas empty-handed, or heaven forbid, in handcuffs, judging by his history in Sin City. Jones last fought in 2020 at UFC 247, where he beat Dominic Reyes by a controversial decision. You can see an argument for 3-2 Jones, but would you agree that 4-1 to Jones is not an acceptable scorecard? Yeah. He'll be making his return to the UFC octagon after three years, his lengthiest layoff since his MMA debut in 2008. Most top drawer fighters would normally go for a tune-up fight after such a lengthy layoff, but not John Jones. He's taking up the toughest fight in the division because he thinks he's not designed to lose. The Titanic wasn't designed to sink either, but look what happened when it crashed into an iceberg. Gone, he's a bit of an iceberg himself. He's cool, but rigid, with an incredibly strong base, and he's looking to take Jones into deep waters and drown him there. The Frenchman has solid kickboxing foundations, exceptional distance management, and crisp combinations. He was a tough cookie to crack, even for guys like Tai Tuavasa and Derek Lewis, who have been fighting regularly for the past three years. Ken Jones, who hasn't fought since forever, solve the puzzle which everyone, other than Francis Naganu, couldn't. Jones won't be the first UFC legend who will be moving up in weight after a lengthy layoff. George St. Pierre did it in 2017, when he came back after four years away from fighting to submit Michael Bisping and win the middleweight title. GSP vacated his title a few weeks later, however, saying that he'd be better off at his natural weight because bulking up to 185 pounds put a lot of stress on his body. In all fairness, the consensus welterweight GOAT did look a little out of shape by his standards at middleweight. I'm trying, um, I'm trying to put on weight. I, I prepare myself a long time. I try to eat and put on weight, but with the stress, it creates problems. Just because St. Pierre had trouble moving up in weight, it doesn't mean John Jones will find it as hard as well. But like GSP, Jones will have to reinvent himself in a higher weight class through an unusual physical transformation, which will affect his performance unless he's allowed some gym candy. Jones will be slow and sloppy with all the additional weight at UFC 285. Last year, a video of heavyweight John Jones hitting pads created a lot of buzz on the internet. Many people commented that he looked very slow and Francis Naganu would punch a hole in his head if he didn't make adjustments. Luckily, Naganu's out of the equation. But Gan is as tough a test as the former champ, and while he doesn't hit as hard as the Predator, he still cracks hard enough to make his opponent see stars. Jones has an incredible chin, however, and it'll be interesting to see how it holds up against the Frenchman. A three-year layoff does his chin a lot of good, but that's about it. As good as Jones is, ring rust is real, and it will affect him one way or another, and all God needs to do is capitalize on it, especially when Bones is getting weaker as he ages. Jones didn't really impress in his last couple of fights, which many speculate is because he's on a downward slope. Let's take a deeper look into the Albuquerque native's recent run of form. Jones dominated the light heavyweight division for over a decade, until Tiago Santos and Dominic Reyes gave him a rude awakening. 
In his fight against Tiago Santos, Jones won by a controversial split decision. Many thought Santos won, but the fight was too close to call and could have gone either way. Only one person thought Jones dominated his Brazilian counterpart, and it was Dana White. What did you think about the fight itself? He won the fight. Things went from bad to worse for Jones when he fought Dominic Reyes. A vast majority of MMA fans and professionals scored the fight in favor of the challenger, whose size, strength, and smart lateral movement gave Jones a run for his money. Jones's controversial wins over Santos and Reyes aged like milk, however. Santos went on to lose four out of his next five fights following Jones and was completely outclassed, particularly by Glover Teixeira and Jamal Hill. Reyes hasn't won a fight since his loss to John Jones, and in all of his three outings since UFC 247, he was brutally finished. What would have happened if Jones fought tougher competition like Jiri Posheka, Jamal Hill, and Magomed Ankalaev? Unpopular opinion, but he would have lost to at least two of them. In his prime, Jones was unstoppable. But now that he's pushing 35, with almost 15 years in the game, he is noticeably slower and far less explosive than he used to be. His wrestling isn't as effective. It's hard to imagine that a man who outwrestled an Olympian like Daniel Cormier would struggle against Santos and Reyes. Yet, it happened. Jones doesn't mix things up either these days. We don't see him using his spinning attacks or his trademark oblique kick as frequently as he used to. He's adopted a more sedated fighting style, which many speculate is due to fewer pictograms in his system. To be fair, his competitors have raised the bar as well, and Jones is finding it increasingly hard to deal with it. That being said, Jones is a gifted fighter and has won against all odds time and again in his career. Nothing lasts forever, unfortunately, and here's why Jones's physical gifts, like his incredible 84-inch reach, won't work against Gone. Dan Hardy was recently asked to share his thoughts on Jones vs. Gone during a recent interview, in which he said that he isn't sure if Jones will succeed at heavyweight or he will give up a lot of his natural advantages. It is, is really, we don't know what he looks like. We don't know how he's gonna, how he's gonna perform with, with the bigger frame. Hardy insinuated that Jones will have a hard time dealing with Gone's size and strength because he struggled against bigger light heavyweights like Dominic Reyes and Alexander Gustafsson. 84 and a half inches, he could quite easily grow into heavyweight, but then would he be the same fighter as he was at light heavyweight. Hardy's opinions are mostly, if not always, backed by evidence, and if his hypothesis is correct, then Jones will have his work cut out for him against a guy who is big and strong, has an incredible 81-inch reach, and is a master at distance management. That's not the only cause of concern for Jones. To transform himself into a heavyweight, he has put on a lot of muscle. The added muscle and strength will have an impact on his agility and endurance. He probably will be very sloppy with less gas in his tank. Gone, on the contrary, is a natural heavyweight. He is incredibly light on his feet and is a tough stylistic matchup for anyone in the division. The increased strength will help Jones with his wrestling, but don't let the Francis Naganu fight fool you into thinking that Gone is a slouch on the mat. He's decently technical, and his wrestling struggles were primarily down to the Cameroonians' superhuman strength. While Jones is a far better wrestler than Naganu, he's not as strong, and it'll be very surprising if he's able to toss Gone around like Naganu did. On the feet, Gon will be the bigger and faster fighter with more tools in his bag. Jones is the GOAT, but does he still have the legendary ability to blow UFC heavyweights out of the water? We'll find out pretty soon, but for now, Gon looks like the man to beat John Jones. If you enjoyed our video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on all the juicy content we have in store for you. That being said, you just watched us explain three reasons why John Jones will lose to Cyril Gaon at UFC 285. We'd love to hear your predictions in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.